Mmm, it's an orange juice. Zappies have the ability to stop charging units like the Battle Ram, Prince Dark Prince, and the Ram Rider. They can also reset Inferno Dragon Charge as well as the Inferno Tower and even Sparky. So Zappies are weak to Fireball and Poison. This makes them the perfect spell bait. They synergize really well with Three Musketeers because they can split with the 3M or they can bait Fireball. Sparky outranges and shoots faster than the Zappies. So the best way to counter Sparky with Zappies is to either throw down a cheap sacrifice or zapping that Sparky first. If it's a lone Sparky, you can surround her with your Zappies. Zappies stun just like the Zap does, causing enemy troops to retarget to the next closest unit and stunning them for 0.5 seconds. Always leave one going one side and two going the other side, preferably having the one Zappy splitting onto the weaker tower so they're more tempted to fireball your higher health tower. A lone Zappy only gets one zap off of your tower and if that's the only thing coming, just absorb it and focus on the other side that has two of them. That's 350 damage left ignored. If three are left ignored, they get 14 zaps for a total of 980 damage. Do not ignore three Zappies. On the flip side, this is also a huge benefit of splitting Zappies when you're using them. That one Zappy is practically guaranteed damage. What are they gonna do? Put down goblins for one Zappy? Ah, oh, that's a negative elixir trade. If you're defending against a medium-sized threat like a Hog Rider, two Zappies to defend the Hog is not a bad idea, so long as they don't have any spells like Fireball. If you're defending against something really beefy like a golem and you have a P.E.K.K.A, chances are that golem user has poison. It's best to only split one Zappy to defend the golem to prevent any spell or splash value. But if your opponent is always fireballing the side you're splitting more heavily on, you should switch it up to bait out their poison or fireball so they don't get value on that one big golem push. There is, however, a perma-stun position for Zappies. This is putting all three Zappies beside the tower. This causes them to line up into a straight line, staggering the timing of each of their attacks to create a perma-stun effect. This is very effective if you know for a fact that they don't have their spell in rotation. If you just straight up place them on top of the giant without any consideration for staggering them and spacing out their attacks, it's basically just one zappy worth of stun. You're in for a world of hurt. If your opponent doesn't have any support coming in, perma-stunning works on all major tanks, they'll barely be able to reach your tower, if at all. The slower they are, the less likely they'll make it to your tower. Perma-stunning works on most major tanks, like giant P.E.K.K.A, giant skeleton, and even the golem gets no death damage. If you plant them early enough, you can completely stop the hog and the ram rider before they connect to your tower. This is the power of permastun. You can also do this by splitting them in the middle as their tanks come in. This separation from each zappy creates distance for the tank to attack each zappy. This also gives them less fireball value on your tower if they choose to fireball all three zappies. This will cause the zappies to lock on one by one. With their recent nerf in low time, a prince will now will always boing one zappy because of his long range and the zappy's incredibly slow low time, even with their perma stun power. Unless you're using them to perma stun, splitting the zappies is always a good idea so your opponent can't get full fireball or poison value. Zappies are great on defense and very good on the offense behind your push. Even one Zappy behind your P.E.K.K.A versus theirs on their side of the map makes a huge difference. It's a 0.5 second stun after all. Think about it this way. For every 4 hits that a Zappy gets on the P.E.K.K.A, that's one less strike. That denies the P.E.K.K.A from 700 damage. If your Zappy survives on defense, use them on the counterattack if possible. They're so bad by themselves but really good at support if they have units tanking for them. Most Zappy decks will have Fireball Poison Bait with them. Think Pump, Three Musketeers, Roll Hog, Flying Machine, Magic Archer, and all sorts of spawner buildings. They also tend to have a large tank in the deck like a P.E.K.K.A or a Mega Name. And if not, it's usually splittable units like the Roll Hogs, Three Musketeers, and now maybe even the Roll Recruits since they cost 7 Elixir. The reason why Zappies work so well in these decks is because they function as Fireball Bait. If they use Fireball on something else like Magic Archer, then they'll have nothing for your Zappies. 
if there are zappies behind a P.E.K.K.A. or a Royal Giant, those zappies are going to slow down everything attacking your tank. That's a lot of damage the Royal Giant can do with zappies supporting them. When you're trying to deal with zappies, the Barbarian Barrel is a very good counter. Zappies don't have that much health to start, so the barrel wrecks their health and the Barbarian sneaks in from behind. Just because of Zappi's ridiculously slow first attack, they have trouble retarding onto new units. This translates to them being incredibly weak to swarms. They're way better when they can lock onto single units. Because of their shorter range, they're not exactly safe behind a tank when faced against an executioner or a bowler. Just the fact that they can splash behind the tank and wreck the Zappi's before they can deal too much damage. Now that the Zappies have a longer load time when in motion, you can actually just drop Fire Spirits on them directly. That's a positive elixir trait for you, not the Zappies. One of the most annoying counters for Zappies is the Mega Knight. His spawn damage obliterates the Zappies. How is this even fair? They don't even get knocked back because they don't even exist anymore. Similarly, Valkyrie dropped on top of them quickly demolishes them in two swings. She's a very good counter to them solely because she's a mini tank and can be dropped directly in the center in the heat of the battle. The Zappies don't even deal that much damage to her and will not be perma-stunning her. A very overlooked interaction is the Skeleton Barrel. It can be used to drop onto the Zappies, knocking them back, stunning them, and dropping seven skeletons to wreck them. Timing is key and they must not have any supporting units or zap. Hope this video helped. Stay juicy.